Yo, what is good fam? Keezy here from Black Market and about a week ago I posed a question on our Instagram story. What kind of videos, what kind of tutorial videos you wanted to see? The response we got the most was probably displacement maps. I'm not an expert on displacement maps, but I will show you what I know and I will try to do it in a way that explains displacement maps in more detail than ad map get pretty effect. Sound good? Let's do it. Okay, so here we are inside of Photoshop and before I start getting super crazy with effects, I wanna demonstrate how displacement actually works. To do this, we're gonna use a line and then displace it by different values on the grayscale so you can see what each of those values actually does to the line. The reason we're using a line is because it is a simple straight object and it will be really easy to see what the displacement does to it. So I'm gonna duplicate my background toggle into the transform tool, reduce it down so it's just a little line on the center of the canvas, and click enter. I can use command I to invert that line. Zooming into my canvas just to fill it up so we have a better idea of what we're looking at. And now I'm gonna create a gradient. Okay, so I'm gonna set the angle to zero, click into my gradient settings and just choose this white to black preset. And then I'm gonna reduce the smoothness from 100 to zero and then click OK. Next thing, I will uh, convert that to a smart object and then rasterize it and then go image, adjustment, posturize. And then I'm gonna set this to a value of 32. To use this to demonstrate displacement, we need to save it as a displacement map. So I'm gonna go File, Save As, and then title this Gradient Disp. And I will save it as a copy and without layers. What saving as a copy does is uh, instead of overwriting this and changing this to say uh, displacement or gradient displacement up here, it's going to save as a separate file. It's pretty self-explanatory, but and then uh, layers, if we uncheck this, it won't save any of these layers. It'll just save the outputted pixel data, which is all we want. The reason I check this is to reduce the file size. So I'll click save, click yes, and then go back into my file and then um, right click my line and convert it to a smart object so that we can edit the displacement later and then go filter, distort, displace. If we change the horizontal scale to zero and the vertical scale to something like 100 and click OK and choose our gradient, you can see really uh, distinctively what exactly is happening. So I'll go back into my gradient and I'm just gonna clip it to our line here so you can actually see how this works. Now, on the very far left, you can see that the, the white most value is lifting the uh, displacement up and the darker it gets, the more pixels it pushes it down. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, really all you need to take away from that is that white pushes up, black pushes down, and values in between do the same, but less. Let's get on and start doing some effects. So I'll just drop in the um, black market uh, hand-drawn hand logo and scale it up and uh, press enter. So now we've got our, our logo in here and we can start applying some displacement effects. Um, I'm going to open up a new Chrome tab and then go to unsplash.com and I'm just going to look for some kind of interesting texture in here. Part of the beauty of displacement is that um, it has practical uses and it also has really creative and artistic uses where we just can kind of get some interesting, neat result. For example, I can literally copy this random picture of some kind of aerial, uh, I don't know, it looks like an oceanscape or something, I'm not really sure, and paste it in and then I'm going to convert this to black and white and then I'm going to... Uh, open up curves in here and just give it some more contrast. And now we've got this look. I'm gonna go File, Save As, and save this as a PSD, because the displacement maps need to be PSDs, and I'm gonna call this uh, a Arial. Hope I spelled that right. As a copy without layers, and then click OK. I'm going to go Filter, Distort, Displace, and uh, the horizontal and vertical scale are sort of a salt to taste thing. If you put zero on the horizontal scale, 
and add in a map, it won't affect the logo uh, on the horizontal axis whatsoever. And it is the opposite for the vertical scale. So I could put in this aerial scape and turn the vertical scale to zero. And the logo is not gonna be pushed up or down at all. It's gonna stay exactly uh, the same proportions on the vertical axis. If we wanted to do both, it's super easy, of course. We would just type in a different value for both of those and uh, re-grab our image. And there's the effect that we get. You can toggle it on and off because you made a smart object. So now we can easily click back and forth and, and see the effect that we're getting. There's one effect and we can uh, go back on the Unsplash, come back in here and grab, say an image like this one, paste it in, scale it up and do the same thing. So file, I'm gonna actually convert this to black and white. You don't have to convert it to black and white if you don't want to, but I like to do that just so I can visualize better what's gonna happen. I also add contrast usually just to crank the effect. I'm gonna file save as, I'm gonna call this one um, market and then save it. I accidentally uh, did not save this one as a copy so that's why you can see that the name of this document has changed. Not really a big deal. We can still apply effects. I'm gonna, instead of tabbing into this one and editing this one, I'm gonna actually hide that one and then go filter, distort, displace, and then add a new one in. And I'm gonna choose the market example. And so now you can see the weird effect that we get with the market. You can actually see some of uh, these characters up here in the top being represented in our logo, which is a pretty dope effect. But what I wanted to show you is that you can actually stack displacement effects if you have a smart object. So if I do that, we are able to blend the two and get a really chaotic, crazy, grungy looking cool effect. A lot of people like this kind of stuff. So if that's what you're after, displacement is an amazing tool for you. Okay, so now I've shown you how easy it is to use displacement as a way to create abstract grunge effects in a matter of minutes. Now I'm also gonna show you a more practical use case which is using displacement to conform your artwork or your logo or whatever it is to the shape of a surface in an image. For example, if we had folded fabric, we could fold our logo along the folds of the fabric to give it a more realistic look. To demonstrate that, I'm gonna use an image from streets.zip here and open it in Photoshop in a new tab. And just kind of zoom into it and uh, I'm actually gonna copy our logo from the previous tab, paste it in here, and then drag these smart filters to the garbage and then scale our logo down so it's fitting on this window. In order to use this image as a displacement map, we first need to right click and convert it to a smart object. Next, I'm gonna hit Command U to open up the hue saturation panel and just reduce the saturation to zero. Then I'm gonna go Command L to bring up the levels and I'm gonna bring the black values up a little bit so that we don't have so much contrast between the highlights and shadows. Then I'm gonna go filter, blur, Gaussian blur and blur it a little bit so that we're getting low frequency details and not so much noise from the high frequency details. What I mean by that is if you zoom in and look at it, we really want this information and we don't want all of this little micro noise that we're getting here. And so, of course, since it's a smart object, we can toggle into it and tweak that value as desired after the fact. And I think this is probably fine. So now I'm gonna go file, save as, and then I just need to save this as a displacement map. Next, I'm going to hide all of the smart filters by clicking this eye icon, and then toggle my logo visibility and zoom back into it so we can see what we're working with. And then go filter, distort, displace. The value of 50 and 50 is probably gonna be high, but for the sake of example, let's just see. And then I will grab street disp and okay so you can see what has happened here is um photoshop has taken the underlying image and the areas that it's black it's pushing it down and over and the areas that it's white it's pushing it up and over to, to the opposite direction so 
I think the horizontal scale maybe is uh, too much on this. So I'm going to turn that down to 20 and do the same thing. And to me, that actually looks really nice. So now you can see that the black values are kind of getting pushed down and over. The white is up here a little bit. So it really looks now like this logo is kind of bending to the shape of the surface. The blending I'm doing here is really just turning down the opacity. But if we wanted to take it a step further, we could double click on the side and then use the blend if underlying layer options to blend our logo a little bit better with the background. and give it some kind of shine. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is all for today's video. I hope you learned something out of it. Again, I'm not an expert on displacement. I'm here sharing what I know. If you really wanna get into the nitty gritty and figure out all of the dirty details about displacement, the best place to do that would be the Adobe documentation where they have outlined exactly what every part of displacement does and how it works and all that good stuff please subscribe please like this video comment if you don't follow us on instagram already we're at black market you can also shop assets textures stock photography and other resources on our website blackmarket.co peace out